Hello and welcome to the first tutorial for SketchupForWoodworkers.com. This is going to be our getting started tutorial and we're going to walk through initial setup of a workspace here and a couple of the simple tools and by the end we'll build a bookshelf. Well, we'll actually have two tutorials. The second one will build the bookshelf. YouTube sort of limits how long these can be when you upload them. So I don't quite have enough time to do the whole thing, but consider this one and the next tutorial as one sort of introduction tutorial. So if you've just started SketchUp and this is the first time you've opened it, this is probably what you're going to see. You're going to see some dude standing in a big green field in the middle of nowhere. Uh, that's because SketchUp, when it was created, was more for architectural work and things that were scaled according to human size. So they include a little guy here for size reference. But we're woodworkers, so we're going to get a different template, which allows us to start with inches and a little bit smaller details. So you're going to go to your preferences. And I'm on a Mac, so I go to SketchUp Preferences. On Windows, you're going to go to Edit Preferences. And you got a couple options here, but we want Template. And you see here's the default, Simple Template, Feet and Inches. If you scroll down just a little bit, we're going to go to Product Design and Woodworking. There's also Product Design and Woodworking Millimeters, so if you want to use millimeters, that's always an option. But we're going to be using, inching, be using inches here. So we close this and create a new file. And it's kind of bland, you're in the middle of big gray nothingness, but this is exactly what we want to see. Uh, our second step, anytime you start a new project, you're going to want to go to Window Model Info. And we've got some more options here. We want units. And by default, the smallest thing you can draw is a 64th of an inch. That's a little small. And it's a lot more detail than we're going to need for these tutorials. So I'm going to change this to a 16th of an inch. And I'm also going to enable snapping. So as you're drawing, it'll snap to 1 16th increments, and you can never draw something in between that. You can't draw out to you know, 15 inches and 128th of an inch. OK, we're ready to go. So our first tool, and pretty much the basis of all your projects, is going to be the rectangle tool. So start drawing a rectangle. You click. There's two ways you can draw. You can click and drag, or you can click once and drag, and then click again to save. And there's our rectangle. Now you might notice as I was drawing that, I'll undo that one, that every once in a while a strange dotted line appeared. There it is there, and there it is there. By default, SketchUp tries to know what you want to do, and you're going to see this all over the place, especially in these tutorials. It, they're called inferences, is the technical term. They're, it's trying to figure out what you need or what you're trying to do. In this case, it thinks I want to draw a square, so it gives me a little hint there, the dotted line that I'm trying to draw a square. And you get a little tooltip there, square. There's also another one up here, right around there. That's the golden section. That's that famous ratio that the Greeks love. They build all their buildings to it. It's supposed to be the most pleasing proportion. I forget the number. It's like 1 to 1.618 or something like that. So for our needs here, we're just going to draw a regular rectangle. So draw that out. And we're not in 3D yet. So this is a 2D object. It's kind of like a sheet of paper on a table. If you want to see that, we're going to start using, we'll go through a couple of these tools up here. This is the Orbit tool. And the Orbit tool allows us to orbit around our object. And if you notice, in relation to these axes, this blue, green, and red line here, the object isn't actually moving. It's we're the ones that are moving. We're sort of moving the camera around the object. Those stay in the same place. There's also the Pan tool, this little hand here. That lets us sort of move the camera vertically and horizontally in space. So we're not rotating around our object, we're just sort of changing our center focus. We also have zoom. And to use this, you click and hold and then move the mouse up, move the mouse down, zoom in and out. And there's also this guy, which is the zoom extends. So he'll basically, let's say we were zoomed way out here, he'll zoom us in until the object just barely fits in the window. So it's close down there and close there. He's not used that often, but uh, an easier way to do zoom is actually you can just if you have a mouse with a wheel, you can just use your wheel and do it there. And that actually works with any tool that's selected. So if you have the rectangle tool, you can still use the zoom. Okay, so we've got our rectangle. So let's get this into 3D. So let's center our view here. Our next most important tool is going to be this, the push-pull tool. And this allows us to actually pull things into 3D. And you'll see when you roll over something that can be pushed and pulled, you'll get this little dotted line grid over top. And it lets us know we can act on it. So you click and drag. And there we go. There's a cube. Click again to save it. And you'll notice now that all these faces now get the dotted line. So you can actually push and pull all these as well. 
and there I pulled it back to zero. Let's get a little bit of terminology out of the way as well. So this is, as I mentioned before, this is considered a face. Anything that's bounded inside of these lines is a face, face, face. These are edges, these here. This will come in useful later as we're referencing different things here. And then there's actual, where the, where the faces meet, that's where you have vertexes. So there's actually a little vertex, a little point right there. And you'll see another one of these uh, references that SketchUp likes to make. It likes to lock on to these vertexes. So you can see it locks in there. You're at an endpoint, locks in, locks in. This becomes very handy later. So there's a rectangle. So let's say we wanted to make some simple stairs. So let's come over here and we'll build another one here. And again, these inferences, you'll see a lock on here. So we can start drawing. You know, we want these steps to line up, so we don't want to start there. We want to start there. So once you start started drawing, if you ever want to cancel, you can hit escape to undo what you've done. So we're going to start here. Click. Now, you'll notice if you're trying to do this by eye, this is going to be very tough to line this up. You can try to approximate and see where that line lines up with the corner and be like, yeah, that's pretty good. But it's never quite going to be perfect. But luckily, SketchUp takes care of that for us, once, once again, with these little hints that it gives us. So if you come up here, you get that little tooltip for endpoint. Well, SketchUp will remember that as you pull out here. It'll sort of lock you to that point. And as long as you're near that same plane, it'll snap right to it. So we want our step to be the same width. So we're going to go there. And then we're going to push pull up. Make a step. And over here. And I'll make a third step. And instead of doing it like this, which we just did, I'll actually do it by what's called subdividing a face. So I'll draw a rectangle on an existing face. And here's another hint. See that? Near the midpoint. Halfway up that wall there. So draw that, and now this has become two separate faces. And you can see that if you use the push pull, they each get their own separate little dotted line look. And what you can do is instead of pulling the stair up, we'll actually pull it out of the previous stair. Like that. And you'll see now this stair has this line here. Remember, we drew it on the floor and pulled it up. So it wasn't, it was never part of this. Whereas this stair was originally part of this when we pulled it out. So this is one giant face now, whereas this is still a separate entity. What we can do is we can cheat and we can erase that line there. And that actually lets us merge those together. So now that's one big face as well. So you can actually change the width of your stairs like that if you wanted to. And we can go around here to the other side. And we'll erase this line as well. And there you go, now that's one big face. There's our stairs. Now you have to be careful with this eraser. You can't just erase anything you want. If you erase an edge that defines a face, so like this edge kind of defines this staircase, see that's not good. Because now you can see inside of our box, inside of our stairs, which is not what we want to do. So we're going to undo that. So just something to keep in mind. The eraser is a handy tool, but it can get very dangerous if you erase the wrong thing. All right, so there's our basic introduction. We built the staircase. Check out the next tutorial where we're actually going to use those same tools we just did and we'll build a bookshelf.